Welcome back to the shop for our first in the Get Woodworking Week episodes uh, that I want to try and put out this week for new woodworkers. Um, if you haven't read the previous blog post, I really urge you to go ahead and do it um, and just see what Get Woodworking Week is, is all about. Um, but in essence, we're trying to, you know, really jumpstart some folks that are on the fence or, you know, f people that are new to the craft, really you know, get some good information out there as to, you know, what is it that you really need to get started um, and, you know, some real good basic information. And, and, you know, so my plan is to go over some, some real basic tools, some things that you're act absolutely not going to be able to live without, um, and then get right into a project, you know, something simple that we can get focused on. So today what I want to do is to talk briefly about saws. Um, you know, if you're getting into the craft, looking to do this, um, mostly with hand tools, um, saws are really going to be the workhorses of your shop. I mean, you're going to need anything from little small saws, uh, for joinery work to medium sized back saws, um, for larger type joinery. Um, but more importantly, what you're going to use the most are going to be standard hand saws. Um, for breaking down your stock, and these going to be these are going to be used for taking large boards, cross cutting them into shorter, more manageable lengths, cutting parts to final size, um, ripping things down, you know, wide boards into narrower boards. Basically, making all of your parts, you're going to do that with your big saws. So, um, what I really want to focus on today are the big saws, but I'm going to start talking um, about the small saws, just so, to give you an idea of what you're going to need. Um, but really, I want to focus mostly on the larger saws. Um, so with regard to the joinery saws, I've got three that I just showed you. So there's a small dovetail saw. And really, this is a specialized saw designed for cutting dovetails only. The blade is usually somewhere around 8 to 10 inches long. It's very um, narrow. So you're not going to get a lot of depth to cut on this. And it usually has very fine pitch to it, very fine uh, tooth spacing. So you'd be looking at something, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20 teeth per inch on a saw like this. And it's a really a specialized saw made for sawing dovetails in stock that's going to be about three quarters of an inch thick or thinner. So you're looking at drawer sides um, and, you know, maybe some case sides. Um, so my opinion, this is probably not one of the first saws that you should get because it's actually a very specialized saw. And while it does a lot of time end up being the first saw that new woodworkers buy, um, it's probably not the best saw for the first saw. If you're going to do this with hand tools, I would actually recommend saving this for last. The next couple of joinery saws that I showed you um, were an another pair of saws. Um, and the reason that I have these in a pair is because one is filed for cross cut, the other one is filed for rip. These are mostly used for sawing um, tenon type joinery, but the cross cut version I also use for making fine cross cuts, cutting you know drawer stock to length, things like that. Um, I don't necessarily think you need both of these saws to get started. In fact, if you're going to get started, if you're on a budget, my recommendation would be to start with the tenon saw file with a ripped tooth. You can cross cut just fine with a finely tooth rip filed saw. If you have whoever files that saw for you, add a little bit of rake to the teeth. Okay, so what that means is um, if you look at the teeth, the teeth are going to lean a little bit back. Um, if you just make them lean back a little bit more, file them with a, this is called the rake angle. So if you file them so that the front of the tooth leans back just a little bit more, it's going to make it, the saw a little smoother, a little easier for cross cutting. Um, and you can use that rip filed saw for cross cutting tasks as well as ripping tasks. And a saw with, this one's got about uh, 12 teeth per inch, 12 points per inch. Um, a saw in this tooth spacing is going to be great for cutting tenons. Um, it's going to be great for dovetails in case stock, um, and really you could use this for dovetails, cutting dovetails in drawer stock as well. Um, you can use it for your cross-cutting tasks if you use a marking knife to score your lines first. Um, so there's no reason that you absolutely have to have a bunch of different joinery saws, especially if you're just getting started. 
Um, just get one. I recommend something probably around 14 to 16 inches with a good three to four inches of, of blade underneath the back um, that you can use. And that's really going to be a good general purpose joinery saw that you can use for an awful lot of things. So with that out of the way, um, let's talk about the real workhorses. Um, what I really want to talk about today, the big saws, the, the hand saws. Um, most shops that do a lot of handwork are going to have a, a minimum of two of these saws. You're going to have one filed with a cross-cut tooth and one filed with a rip tooth. The cross-cutting saw is obviously going to be used for cross-cutting tasks. Taking stock, breaking down long boards into shorter boards that are more easily manageable, closer to final project size. Um, you'll also use that saw for cutting panels down to um, their final size. I actually use a short panel saw for most of my cross cutting tasks. This saw is only 20 inches long, um, but really you could use anything from 20 inches up to the full length of your rip saw. Um, something around, I would say anywhere from eight to 10 uh, points per inch is going to be the ideal pitch for a good general purpose cross cut saw. And you can do an awful lot with this saw, um, including cutting your joinery shoulders. Um, the other saw, like I mentioned, you're going to want is a good rip saw. Um, you do a lot of rip work when, when you're working by hand. So having a good sharp rip saw is very important. Um, in fact, I like to have several if I can with different tooth configurations for different thicknesses of stock. However, obviously, if you're just getting started, you're just going to be looking for one good rip saw. Um, for that, I would recommend anything from a five to six point per inch saw. That's going to be a good general purpose um, tooth spacing for ripping your common three quarter to four quarter stock. Um, it's going to do most of your ripping tasks until you get into much thicker stock. So a five to six point saw is really going to be what you're looking for. Um, it's important to get a saw that's balanced right for you um, and the right length and the right balance. Um, you know, when you, when you go ahead and you start sawing and you start working by hand, you'll find that a lot of it um, is much easier and much more accurate. You know, it's more pleasurable and it's easier to do the work accurately um, if you can set yourself up ergonomically correctly to do the work. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, if you're going to be doing cross-cutting and ripping of big stock, you're going to need a saw bench of some kind. Now, a saw bench is just a low bench, something that's about knee height. And it's important that it's about knee height um, because regardless of how tall you are, if you make your bench so that it's, it, it's at about the height of your kneecap, it's going to be comfortable for you to use. It's basically, that's the right height for you um, ergonomically, the best height. Um, so this one is just an old piece of two by material. It doesn't really matter how wide it is. This is about 30 inches long and it's mine stands about 18 inches. You can see right about at my kneecap. The reason we want it right at the kneecap is so that when we want to cut stock, we can use our knee as a clamp. If this bench was much higher than this, it would be very uncomfortable for me. I would have to get my knee up much higher. I'd be off balance and it just wouldn't work well. So really you should be looking for something knee height. You run into a problem with that though. If you make your bench based off of your knee height and you're using a saw that's too long for you, well, you could end up hitting the floor with that saw when you're making your cuts. So once you have your saw bench height established, it's really important for you to get a saw that's sized properly for you. Now, fortunately, it's not that hard to find a saw that's right size for you. And it's not that hard to figure out what the right size is. Um, obviously, the shorter you are, the shorter the saw you're gonna need, okay? Um, I'm five foot six, so for me, using a 28 to 30 inch rip saw is not gonna be the best option. Um, I've used saws of different sizes um, over the years, and what I've really found for me personally, a saw that's about 24 inches long is really, really works out the best. The easiest way to figure it out is to actually take a measurement of your arm. So if you close a fist like you're holding a saw, 
and take a measurement from the inside of your shoulder to this knuckle, this first knuckle on the outside of your hand. That's about the length of the saw blade that you should be using. So you can see here, if I put this saw right into my shoulder and close my fist, there's my knuckle sticking right up the edge. So a good 24 inch saw is perfect for me. Now obviously, as I mentioned, I'm 5'6". Um, if you are, most people are gonna be taller than me. Um, so you know, you're gonna wanna take that measurement for yourself, get a saw that's properly sized and properly balanced for you. The handle should be comfortable, three finger grip. Um, this particular style handle is actually too tight for a four finger grip, which is good because it forces you to use a three finger grip, which is the grip you should be using anyway, regardless of whether or not you can get four fingers in the grip. Um, so you want the saw to be the proper length for you. You want it to be balanced. It shouldn't feel too heavy. It shouldn't put a lot of strain on your wrist and your forearm to use this saw for long periods of time. So if you follow these guidelines, you should be able to get uh, a good couple of saws that are well set up for you. Get them filed, get them sharp. Most important thing that I can recommend is to make sure your saws are, sh are sharp. Um, I would say the most frustrating thing for a beginner is, is dull tools. Um, so if you're buying a new saw, buy a good quality saw from um, you know one of the one of the the quality saw makers out there don't just base it things on price tag if you're on a budget i would recommend going with an older saw um something you know an old distant an old keen cutter an old atkins saw and have it sharpened by somebody who um who knows how to sharpen saws well that can get you a saw that's set up properly and that's properly sharpened because the most frustrating thing for anyone just starting out is going to be using a dull saw. Um, it's really not going to, going to be a lot of fun. Um, so that's it for, for today. Tomorrow I hope to come back with uh, another quick topic for you. Um, but for right now, you know, those three saws are, are the ones that I'm going to recommend you start out with. A good five to six point rip saw, a good eight to ten point cross cut saw, and one single joinery saw, something in the 14 to 16 inch range. Um, with a back saw, obviously with a back, um, and something around, you know, 10 to, to 12 points per inch. Three good saws to get you started.